Hey everybody, welcome back. It's Tom here at the Highway Run Wood Shop, and today we are going to cut a perfect circle using a rectangle? I know what it sounds like, but as Billy Shakes said, though this be madness, yet there is method in it. You ready? Let's jump in. At some point or another in your woodworking journey, you're going to need to cut a circle. That circle could be a disc, like this one, or it could be a hole, like this. Now if that disc or hole happens to be, say, six inches or less, and it doesn't need to be all that accurate, then your best bet is probably to just go out to your local hardware store and get yourself a hole saw like this guy. If you need something bigger though, like this one is 12 inches across, you'll have to find another option. Now one option is to use a compass to draw the circle that you need. That's not a compass. This is a compass. Use a jigsaw or a bandsaw to cut it close and sand right up to the line. That would definitely work. In fact, I've done it that way many times, especially when I'm cutting a three inch thick butcher block. The downside of that method is that it's extremely difficult to sand perfect curves without accidentally leaving a flat spot here and there. There is a better way though. All you need is a router, some plywood, a little bit of out of the box thinking. We'll be doing a little bit of math, but don't worry, you won't need a degree in electrical engineering to follow along. Plus, we'll put everything you need to know up on the screen as we go. I'm gonna use my trim router for this. A regular router with a plunge base is a better choice here, but until I get around to actually buying one of those, I'll just have to use what I've got. I measured the square base plate that came with the router, and it's three and a half inches across. So I'm gonna rip this piece of quarter inch plywood down to that size. Using that square base plate as a template, I'm tracing the holes for the mounting screws. Try to be as flush to the sides as you can. Also, give yourself a reference line where the edge of the plate is. We'll need that later. The base plate is held onto the router with machine screws the holes are countersunk so the screw heads do not stick above the surface. I'm going to drill the countersinks first using an oversized Forstner bit. You want to go just far enough so the screw heads sit below the surface. Follow that up with drilling out the screw hole. Pick a bit that's a little bigger than the diameter of the screw, but not bigger than the screw head, obviously. Now this is where the math comes in. I want to cut a disc that is 12 inches across. If you remember your high school geometry, the distance across the circle is called the diameter, and half the diameter is called the radius. The radius is the number we need to know right now. In our case, the diameter is 12 inches, which means that the radius is 6 inches. Take your ruler or tape measure and measure from the end of the plywood to your reference line. Take that number, 3.5 inches in our case, and add the radius of the circle you want to cut. 3.5 plus 6 is 9.5. Now we need to subtract half the distance across the base plate that we use as a template, because that will tell us how far we are to the center of the bit. The base plate was three and a half inches, so half of that is one and three quarters. Nine and a half minus one and three quarters is seven and three quarters. Now we're not quite done yet. We haven't taken into account the size of the bit. Because we want a 12 inch disc, we want to add back the radius of the router bit. If we wanted a 12 inch hole, we would subtract the radius of the router bit. My bit is a quarter inch wide, so half of that is one eighth. Seven and three quarters plus one eighth is seven and seven eighths. Find the center of the plywood at that line, and that's where I'll drill the hole for the pivot. Use a drill bit that is just slightly bigger than the screw you're gonna use for the pivot. You want the plywood to rotate around the screw, but not wiggle. Before attaching the plywood to the router, Make sure you install whatever bit you want to use to cut your material. In my case, I'm using a quarter inch up spiral bit. Raise the bit in the base as far as you can so that it doesn't protrude. Now mount the plywood to the router using those machine screws. To get the bit through the plywood, hold the router upside down in your hands. Turn the power on and slowly raise the bit until it just breaks through the surface. Then back it off a little so it sits below.
locate the B side or the side of your disc that will not show and attach your jig with a screw. Make sure the screw holds but isn't too tight. Give it a few turns to be sure that it rotates freely. Hold the jig flat on the workpiece and turn the router on. Lower the bit into the wood so that you're cutting up to maybe an eighth of an inch deep. Go around in a full circle. I like to vacuum out the dust after every pass, but that's just me. Keep lowering the bit and making passes until you have somewhere between a quarter and a half inch left to go. Now this is where you have a choice to make. You can keep going until you're all the way through. Just make sure the router doesn't jump as you cut the final bit of wood away. Another way that I prefer is to be a little more sophisticated. You pull your jigsaw out and cut through the groove that the router left. Put a trim bit into your router and take a victory lap all the way around the disc to clean up that last little bit. Congratulations, you got yourself a perfect circle. Just a few more of these and I'll have enough tiddlywinks for Gulliver to take on his next travel. I hope you enjoyed the video. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Don't forget to subscribe. We have a lot of great videos on the channel already, but you don't want to miss the new ones as they come out. Catch you guys later.